Hello everybody, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to react to what would we see at the speed of light made by Scien Scien Click? Scientific Click, I think it's called. Uh, the entire channel is called uh, Scientific Click English. I have seen previous videos from them and I gotta say they make some fantastic visualization of um, scientific things like for example one of their videos, one of my favorites in fact of this channel is what, will ha what would we see if we fall into a black hole? Now I'm not a science science guy. I don't know. I don't know math or something. I fucking despise ma um, doing math, but I do kind of like uh, respect and uh, actually kind of like a little bit jelly when seeing people who knows about science, math and that mathematics. How how is it? Math and that sort of thing. Um, Honestly, I'm just one of those people, well, so as quick as, he, uh, the moment I see a calculation or that sort of thing, like 2 plus 2 equals 4 or something, to me it's just, all I see is Arabic, like an Arabic language or something. And the moment I learn Arabic, all of a sudden it turns to Chinese. I, I hate mathematics doing it by myself. I just fucking despise it. But uh, I do love when people can visualize for some people like me, normal people, normal people like me who just don't know anything about how they, how they, how they do this. Like, what is this freaking dumbass symbols that you can read? I don't know. I can't even read them. I can't not learn them because they're just going to change. So l let's see what they have done. I uh, this is kind of like maybe two weeks old by this point, and um, I I'm looking forward to this one. It's 50 minutes long. I hope <laughs> it's going to feel like longer because sometimes it does feel like it's end by that especially when they are visualizing something that I love I love space I love learning about space like planets solar systems galaxies and all these really weird things that happens in space it's, I do know um, the speed of light when I read when I read about it and kind of like a, a, a science space in a nutshell if you want to call it that speed of light is the quickest uh, thing that we we just know about so far and it's around if i remember like 300 million meters per second or something like that and also when you are going at the speed of light something really weird hap happens like i do know for example that light have a problem to catch up with you if you go in at speed of light so everything behind you becomes like distorted some sort of a way like it becomes more red shifted and uh, the uh, everything in front of you because light is having a more easier time to uh, or faster you receive light much light much more faster so everything kind of like become more blue shifted and uh, and also that if you go in the speed of light everything kind of like looks like everything is just kind of like moving away from you rather than uh, it's become uh, rather than it's kind of like it looks like it's going to come fo uh, forward with. i can't explain this sort of, sort of shit i don't know how to explain this sort of thing i i'm like i don't know this thing that's why i love people who can visualize this so i'm i'm curious to see what they have done here <clears throat> Welcome back to Science Click. Today, what would we see if we approached the speed of light? Let's embark together on a spaceship which accelerates away from Earth, moving faster and faster. What would we see when constantly accelerating? What optical effects would occur? And if we tried to exceed light speed by bending space-time like in sci-fi movies, what would we see? Answering these questions will lead us to explore many fascinating phenomena of our universe and immerse ourselves at the heart of special and general relativity. Our spacecraft is initially at rest. Once launched, we begin to accelerate. We imagine that its propulsion system allows us to accelerate constantly as long as we wish. As we gain speed, we move away from Earth. By accelerating more and more, one would think that the speed would eventually become unbearable. However, 
This is not the case. Speed has no effect on our body. When two trains cross, it is impossible to feel whether it is our train or the other which is at rest. Mm, I Similarly, that inside well. the spaceship, we cannot feel its speed, but only its acceleration, <clears throat> the thrust of the reactors which presses us against our seats. If this thrust is reasonable, it will be perfectly bearable all along our journey, even when approaching the speed of light. There is nonetheless a risk associated with very high speeds, a collision. At yeah, I heard about that. Uh, if you see like those damages on the International Space Station, when like they get, they, they, they get like hit once with uh, one of those, uh, I think it's like a paint, a small piece of paint that crashed into their v windows or something, and it just cracked almost the entire windows. Like, it's so fascinating that just a small, small thing can just do such a damage at in, sp in such a high speed. At high velocity, a mere speck of dust would cause colossal damage if it hit us. A piece of dust, like... We are never gonna be able to leave this planet or solar system. <laughs> Fortunately, our ship is equipped with a force field that repels dangerous objects and allows us to roam freely through space. I believe that we are not going to have a force field, something like that, in hundreds of years. I believe it's mostly going to be like one of those big shield things, like maybe some sort of thermal shields or something, that's going to prevent a uh, collision with dust and other sort of thing, like a big shield or surrounding the front of the ship. That's something that I believe we are going to have in the future. <clears throat> As we accelerate, a first optical effect appears. Mm. The stars in front of us, which we get closer to, seem to gradually move away. The sky contracts before us. To understand, think of this common situation. You are in a car driving at high speed and it starts to rain. The rain falls vertically from top to bottom. But as the car moves forwards, you receive raindrops on the windshield from face on. The rain does not appear to fall from above, but from the front, as if its trajectory were tilted. And the more you accelerate, the more the rain seems to come from face on. In our spaceship, the opt- I think you also have to remember that, uh, I don't know if, if it's the same thing happening with the rain, but when it's snowing and when you're driving through the snow, you kind of like experience the, same, experience the same thing. But also you have to include that uh, you have kind of like a windshield for the car. Like uh, you have some sort of, if something falls like a snowflake on the car, it will actually be catch up by some sort of wind, uh, uh, wind current made by your car. Like for, especially from the hood and the, the windows, it's just going to pass you by. I don't know if it's happening the same with the raindrops, maybe small ones, but not big ones. The optical effect is perfectly <clears throat> analogous. The stars' light comes from a certain direction, but as we accelerate, the light rays appear to come more and more from the front. Their direction seems different when we are in motion. This is the aberration of light. As light focuses in front of us, its intensity increases while behind us, the sky seems to widen and becomes darker. Space is so freaking... I sometimes, I can't, sometimes I just can't find words. Every time I uh, see something uh, like from a space related things and something, it just, what the hell is going on? Like, it's kind of like everything you know about space is just being thrown out the window. It's so fascinating that something like this happenings can happen if you go with its speed, uh, light speed. It's so fascinating. Like I want to experience in real life all that distortion and weird shit that's going on. Like it's so fascinating. The aberration of light results in another strange phenomenon. <clears throat> Let's imagine we are moving through an immense grid representing the fabric of space. Ordinarily, we would see a straight grid 
made up of straight lines converging in front of us due to perspective. However, by speeding up, the aberration phenomenon distorts the image of the sky around us as the days go by. The grid seems to contract forward and the straight lines bend. If we were to go past an object, it would appear to be slightly angled in our direction. This is called Terrell Penrose rotation. As we move very Never quickly, images of objects seem contracted in front of us and perspective is strongly distorted. We often hear that the f Is that some sort of... What do you call it? Like... A mirror effect? Where... where compared to the... Kind of like the Doppler effect, you know, when you're standing on a street and an ambulance go by quickly, it's... Uh, the sounds... The sound waves you're receiving are much more intense and quick uh, when, it's, when it's coming towards you and then as soon as it passes the sound waves you start to become less and less uh, uh, how you call it effective in sort of way you're like doo -doo 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 like that is that kind of like the same thing but but visualizing light speed oh, I have so many questions the further we look into space the further we look into the past yeah, I heard about that as well. It's so fascinating. Like, you do telling me that if I go further light years away right now, I will be able to see my own birth. <laughs> it's so fascinating. But also scary because I know when you're looking out into space, one of those deep field uh, uh, captured by Hubble, I think it was. It's so fascinating to see these galaxies formed for like billions and billions of years ago. Like almost at the beginning of the Big Bang, it's so fascinating. They look so weird compared to uh, today's galaxies. Well, millions of years uh, of galaxies. Indeed, the light we receive from a distant star must travel billions of kilometers. This journey Excuse is me. not instantaneous, and it takes some time for light to reach us. As a result, we see the star as yeah, it... Yeah, like uh, that uh, Betelgeuse star. Apparently it's going to go supernova within several thousand years or something. But in but in fact, it might actually already have exploded. We just don't know. We have just not seen the, the explosion reach us yet. Or the light of the explosion reach us yet. That's so weird. Like, it's like ev ev any time. Any time if you look up in the star... There might be a supernova. I think I actually saw a supernova once. I was just uh, with my. It was kind of like a cold winter night, where it was star, it was stars in the sky, no moon, no full moon or something, no clouds. It was just we were out in the wilderness, and all of a sudden we see this, this kind of like a big star just appearing up in the sky, like slowly fading up, and we all just sitting. What the hell is? What the hell is that? Like, it, it literally looks like an explosion, like a small, small, small ball of light, just fading, just fading, what do you call it? Like, fades into existence, and then after like five seconds, it just fades away. Like, it just, we just sat and just, the fuck did we see? <laughs> And the scariest part is that just a couple of minutes later, we saw it again. At that point, we were just... Either we are seeing an explosion, some sort of military uh, exercise or something in the skies, but we didn't hear any sounds from this sort of explosion. Then we, then we were just... Maybe we saw like a collision asteroid or something. Maybe we saw some sort of meteorite. But this it looked so, so different compared to our regular explosion it just fades into existence and now it existed for like a couple of seconds then all of a sudden it just fades away and it was just way up in the sky we're we not talking our, our throughout the horizon or uh, kind of like a nine uh, 70 degrees no this was like up nine or eight and 90 degrees right up in the, into the stars like it was so weird we were we also took into calculation about maybe this is a satellite, something. What the hell did we just see? And a couple of uh, us had who had the telephone, 
actually looked at kind of like a star news things uh, on a website and they actually re registered uh, two supernovas in a galaxy far far away we were just did we see a supernova really was that a supernova <laughs> i never forget that that moment never it was such a weird feeling to know that we saw one of the biggest we might have seen one of the most actually really big explosions that can happen in in our existence it's just such a weird feeling it's just we, we just didn't know what the hell we were seeing the only confirmation that it was a supernova is that we could not explain it we everything we tried to visualize visualize or something like what the fuck is this so we actually also, as I said, the telephone is confirmation, and we also asked someone who worked at uh, kind of like a university if they have registered anything in the skies during the night. Uh, I think, don't remember which was five years, five, six years or something. No, it must be more like eight years or something like that. And they said, Yeah, we actually registered something happened in the sky to uh, really bright phenomena. We think it's a supernova, we can't really confirm it because they were gone really quickly it was such an experience i i cannot explain how i felt it felt euphoric in something to see something like that it, it's such a weird feeling huh. it was in the past when it emitted this light perhaps several <coughs> thousand years ago who knows how it might have changed since then Looking out from our spaceship, the same phenomenon is at work. As we move away from Earth, the planet's light takes longer and longer to reach us. If we could zoom in with a telescope, we would see people on Earth evolving in slow motion. This is the Doppler effect. Yeah, the Doppler Each effect. tick of the clocks on Earth takes longer and longer to reach us. So we receive light rays in slow motion and their intensity seems to weaken as the image of the planet shifts towards red color. In front of us, it's the opposite effect. The ship catches up with the light and the stars seem to get brighter. They shift towards blue color and their clocks seem to tick faster. With precise enough equipment, we could measure the aberration and Doppler effects since the start of our acceleration in space. However, if we decided to end our journey and return to Earth, these effects would have had no impact. They are only optical illusions due to the way we receive light while moving. After several hundred days, however, as the reactors push us ever faster, the ship begins to approach light speed. At such speeds, some phenomena if i remember correctly no matter how much you're uh, accelerating in space you will never it doesn't matter how much you will never reach the speed of light it's just impossible no matter what we do that's so far that i read about speed of light and that sort of thing will no longer be mere optical illusions real physical effects will kick in with irreversible consequences. Mm -hmm. Special oh, yeah, relativity at, uh, comes into well. play. A first consequence of relativity is known as time dilation. Mm. Our universe is a huge four-dimensional fabric called space-time, made up of three dimensions of space and one dimension of time. Inside space-time, all bodies trace a trajectory since they all advance towards their future. Before takeoff, our ship was moving in the same way as Earth towards the future. But by picking up speed and zooming away from Earth faster and faster, our trajectory gradually deviated from that of the planet. The axis we call time is no longer aligned with the time axis of people on Earth. If we decided to turn around and come back, our clocks would have measured a different time and we would have aged less than Earthlings because our trajectories in space-time would have been different. Time Another key consequence of special relativity time. is called length contraction. 
When a body moves at close to light speed, its length gets contracted in the direction of its motion. From the spaceship's perspective, the entire universe is moving backwards. For us, the universe is contracted along our direction of motion. As such, the length of the journey to reach our destination is shorter than expected. We are not talking about optical effects anymore, but of a physical and concrete phenomenon. If we tried to reach a distant star, the journey would genuinely seem shorter to us. It would take less and less time the faster we move. Thus, contrary to popular misconception, it is in fact possible to travel thousands of light years in just a few seconds. And in the case where we would move almost at light speed, the journey would even seem instantaneous to us. For the people uh. on Earth, however, several thousand years would have passed. Just so unrealistic in life. Length contraction is a very real phenomenon. <clears throat> However, visually, it would be difficult to see. To understand why, imagine that we cross the orbit of a planet. As it moves very quickly towards us, the planet's length is contracted. But remember, the farther we look into space, the farther we look into the past. And from our perspective, the back of the planet is located further in space than the front of the planet. The image that we receive from the back of the planet has taken longer to reach us, so we see it as it was in the past. You see what I'm telling you, they visualize it so good. Even if it is contracted, <coughs> the planet does not look like it because we receive the image of its back with a delay. Rather than contracted, it appears to be rotated. This is a phenomenon we have already seen, Terrell Penrose rotation. When we move very fast and look to our side, the edges of the object around us seem shorter in the direction of motion. This can be interpreted either as length contraction or as a rotation, as a change in perspective. For the same reason, a person watching us zoom by would not really see our ship contracted, but rather rotated on itself. Over time, our field of view continues to contract. It intensifies in front of us while going completely black behind us. By accelerating more and more, we would perhaps expect to reach the speed of light at some point. What would we see then? This question might be one of the most fundamental in relativity. The answer is no. Even if the ship accelerates constantly, we will never reach the speed of light. That is because the speed of light is absolute. You may try to catch a light ray, but from your point of view, it will always escape at the same speed, the speed of light. You may accelerate as much as you wish, even if from Earth you would seem to approach the speed of light from your point of view, you are still motionless, and light escapes inexorably. In short, it is strictly impossible to exceed or even reach the speed of light. At best, our ship will continue to accelerate forever, and our field of vision will continue to shrink ever more, until forming an infinitely bright spot in front of us, surrounded by a completely black sky. Almost at light speed, all optical effects would become extreme. As we catch up with light rays before us, they all seem to come from the front. Meanwhile, the rays behind us can never reach us. In our frame of reference, the universe would be extremely contracted, like a thin fabric that we would cross from side to side in a fraction of a second. For a person on Earth, we'd be moving at the speed of light. But for us, the trip seems instantaneous. We move infinitely fast. To conclude, nothing can ever move faster than light through space. But there might be a way to circumvent this rule. In fact, nothing prohibits space itself from moving faster than light. Indeed, the theory of general relativity teaches us that the fabric of space-time is dynamic. 
it can bend in multiple ways. Uh, um, we could thus imagine <clears throat> creating a uh, bubble uh, around drive. our spaceship, which we would propel faster than... So basically the warp drive is that uh, you're not moving the ship, you're just moving the space in front of you. It's, <laughs> as I said, I can't, I can't exp explain it. They, you just have to visualize it like this. I, if I remember correctly, like in Star Wars with the hyperdrive, they don't really... It's not like a warp drive, it's more like a dimensional highway. It, that's the only thing that's so sort of way that I can explain it. I just don't know these sort of things. But it's so fascinating. Than light. This is called a warp drive in reference to science fiction. It would no longer be a matter of zooming a vehicle through space, but of propelling the fabric of space itself. Our ship would remain motionless surfing on a wave of faster than light space-time. Such a structure may seem absurd, and indeed it is currently thought to be impossible to achieve. Oh. Producing a warp drive would require bending space-time with huge amounts of negative mass, a form of matter that does not seem to exist in our universe. That said, mathematics still allow us to model and calculate. Look at this. I, uh... What do you see? Uh, to me, it's just Arabic or Chinese. I can't read this sort of shit. Like, but people who can, like, it's sort of way I'm a little bit jelly because, like, D S two equals minus C two. Like, what the hell are you talking? <laughs> say, man, speak English. But uh, what we would see in such a situation, if we looked from outside, the warp drive would seem to appear out of nowhere. The curvature of space-time deviates the trajectory of light rays, forming a moving lens which splits into two, one part moving forwards and the other retreating in the opposite direction. Why though? Light travels slower than the warp drive itself. When it approaches, light has not yet had the time to reach ah. us. And so after it, it crosses us, so it we receive arc, both yeah. the light which had not yet reached <sighs> us and the rays which were emitted later. Ah, oh, space. Space time. Looking from the inside of the warp drive, we would see the sky contracted in front of us and very bright. Behind us, the universe would look extremely dark, and a whole That's patch so of the sky so would simply like vanish from our view. Something. The light emitted from there is too slow to catch up with us. A cone of the universe remains permanently invisible. What? All. Already over? Oh, damn it, you want to roll here. Oh. Uh, as always with uh, Scientific Click, they do some one of the most impressive visualization of mathematics and sort of thing. Like, the more you learn about space and time and all these sort of things, you just realize how the hell are we going to be able to escape just our own solar system? I mean, it's going to take like, what, a trip to Mars, like two years in current technology? <sighs> Space travel is something that I absolutely love uh, seeing and that sort of thing in movies and books and comics and even maybe not reading it because it's going to be <laughs> too weird to visualize if you don't do it like this. But... <sighs> Space is weird. <laughs> it, even though it's so fascinating to learn about it and it just I'm so in a way I'm just sad that I cannot I cannot experience how you society and humanity will look like let's say 500 years from now like how will it look like if we were having to done our, ourselves in a sort of way a favor and just annihilate ourselves because we are just dumb in hell dumb as hell and that sort of thing so so fast. I uh, I love when they do this. I love when they visualize for all the co common people or peasants, for example, who just don't know anything about this sort of thing. They just visualize. This is how it works. This is how we we know it. Like this is more. This is logic. Like ah, uh, give me that knowledge. But just uh, it's it's fascinating. It's space is just fascinating. I I cannot stop saying that space is fascinating it's scary fascinating like it's horrific in sort of way in sort of way 
when it, we especially when we talk about the speed of light and the distance and the, the enormity of the space is just insane. Like as I said, as as they said, like light tra- travels around three hundred million million meters a seconds. Like, and the nearest star system is four years away. I think it is the Alpha Centauri or Proxima Centauri. It's just four light years away. It takes four years for the light to travel, and it travels. 300 million meters per second, I think it is, every day for an entire year. How the hell are we going to be able to <laughs> just, it's just travel in space, it's just, how? It's going to be fascinating to see how maybe 40 years, how much space technology has advanced. I mean, just right now with the... Um, SpaceX and that's really Elon Musk. If you have seen their uh, spaceships, they look. I mean, the technology behind them are so fascinating. The, the fact that they can land an entire skyscraper in sort of way upright without any what you call it, like gravity help and that sort of thing. It just if you have seen those videos of the SpaceX uh, spaceships when they are landing, it's just so. It's so cool, like 40 years from now, how will it look like? Anyway, so this is the, my reaction, reaction video on what will we see at speed of light. Man, that that, well, that passed away, that, that felt, did, that it did, did not feel like 50 minutes, that felt like more like 8 minutes for some reason. Anyway, so go and subs to these guys, I, they, in my opinion, they deserve it, they wish, they they do some fantastic work showing off science and all uh, and again they're, they have done a lot of videos that are just mind-blowing in sort of way anyway hope you all have a great spring and the sun is right now up finally finally i'm so sick of the winter months and uh, the sun is hiding behind the clouds finally it's breaking all the clouds are just disappearing now the sun finally and all it's in, uh, white glory just shining on us some people say no it's yellow no the sun is white so there you go anyway see you all later